Hey, welcome back on Lai. Most of you guys and I have quite a high expectation for SpaceX's Big Falcon rocket, and we ought to be, I think. BFR is set out to be the most ambitious project humans have ever imagined, and its only competitor, the Space Launch System's performance, is hardly satisfactory. However, with such a high expectation, BFR is pressure to perform. BFR wants to be more powerful than Saturn V, and it aims to cost less than Falcon 1. So it goes without saying that BFR will face a lot of difficulties in the future. The one I want to focus on today is the choice of having 31 Raptor engines on its first stage. So many engines. So how does SpaceX arrive at this conclusion? Well, first of all, having 31 engines is not out of line with SpaceX capability. Falcon 9 has 9 engines and Falcon Heavy has 27 engines. With the successful landing of Falcon Heavy, SpaceX acquired experiences managing a large number of engines at the same time. However, this argument still is not adequate to explain why SpaceX has made a conscious choice to have more engines instead of having less but more powerful engines like the Saturn V or the shuttle. Their thrust comparisons look something like this. As you can see, thrust of engines on Saturn V is much higher. Saturn V was equipped with 5 engines and the shuttle only has 2 solid state boosters at launch. So why is that? Well, the answer goes back to something I talk about all the time on this channel when I evaluate companies, which is core competency. SpaceX is a startup and ever since its inception, it did not have the luxury of the space launch system with the backing of the American Congress. The choice to SpaceX was to either survive or die, not how many billions to spend. It's a hard choice, but with that comes a culture of efficiency and cost reduction spending the least money for the most return. You see this reflected in a few ways. Firstly, Merlin engines until today has the highest thrust to weight ratio among all engines. With the same amount of engine weight, Merlin can lift higher quantity of mass than any other engines existed. This principle will also be implemented on Raptor engines. According to Spaceflight 101, Raptor engines thrust to weight ratio will be better because of the 3D printing techniques used. Currently, we already know that the thrust of Raptor is twice that of a Merlin. Secondly, the focus on cost effectiveness is also reflected on its strategy of mass production. The main rationale behind using 31 smaller engines on its first stage is so that SpaceX could use the same engine on its second stage. Seven Raptor engines will be used in the second stage of BFR. We can compare this to the famous Saturn V again, in which Five Rocketdyne F1 engines are used on the first stage and six Rocketdyne J2 engines are used on its second stage and third stage. In this way, SpaceX could focus all of its resources on one single engine to save cost. Furthermore, with higher production quantity of Raptor engines comes specialization and cost reduction as well. We can once again compare this to the Saturn V. Saturn V over its lifetime flew 13 times. Therefore, 65 Rocketdyne F1 engines and 65 Rocketdyne J2 engines are produced. However, if you do the calculation, 38 Raptor engines will be produced for just one BFR flight. Therefore, over the course of BFR's lifetime, thousands of Raptor engines will be produced to meet the demand. Since BFR is designed to be fully reusable, it might not be the case that factories will continuously produce Raptor engines, but even if we have a fleet of 30 BFRs built, that will need over a thousand Raptor engines. This higher quantity will result in lower production cost. Also, on that note, SpaceX plans to send 10,000 satellites to space in the next decade under project Starlink. This will also lower unit production cost of Raptor engine further. Finally, having higher number of smaller engines will give BFR the maneuverability at landing. Usually, when rockets are heading back to Earth after its mission, it has very little fuel left and therefore it's hard to restart powerful, huge engines. Smaller engines arranged symmetrically will work better under this situation. Higher number of engines will also ensure that if one or two engines are down, BFR will still be able to land itself safely. At the end of the day, it all comes down to core competency. SpaceX has been making rockets for the past 16 years and what it does best is managing small engines efficiently. Its engineers are good at it and therefore there's really no reason to take any risk developing mega engines like Rocketdyne F1. And perhaps with the focus 
on reusability nowadays, we're ushered into a new era of smaller engines. Let's wait and see. All right, thank you all so much for watching. Let me know in the comment down below if you agree with my assessment. Uh, I had a blast making this video, so hopefully you guys enjoy this video too. Uh, oh yeah, don't forget to follow me at Lay Creatives, and if you are interested in watching more original content by me, uh, definitely uh, support me on Patreon as these guys did already. As always, I'm Lay. I'll catch you guys later.